Welcome back, grade nine. So let's move on to the end of lesson 2.6 today. In today's period, we will start with question 10. And if you haven't completed until nine, please check back to the previous periods and complete them so that this will be easy for you. Question 10, factorize the polynomial with power three. But you can notice here that 27 doesn't have a power three. But you know, 27 is 3 power 3. So we can rewrite 3y power 3 and 125 is 5 power 3, so 5z power 3. So the identity looks like, or it is the same as x cubed minus x cubed plus y cubed, which is equal to x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. Again, remember, there is no two here. And if the first bracket is plus, the second bracket, the middle term is minus. These are the things that you have to keep in your mind. So when we rewrite this polynomial, we can write the first term plus the second term without any power in the first bracket. And in the second bracket, we have to write first term, power two. That's why I put a second bracket there, minus the first term times the second term plus the square of the second term. Now let's expand this one. So it is 3y plus 5z. There is no change in the first bracket, but second bracket changes. 3 square y square is 9y square minus. That's why I always ask you to put a bracket so that you will not ignore or you will not forget the square of 3. 3 times 5 is 15yz plus five square z square is 25 z square and that's it we are done let's see the next question 64 m cube minus 343 n cube 64 is 8 power 2 but this is also 4 power 3 and we need power 3 so we can rewrite 4 m power 3 minus 7 n power 3 now this is in the same form but you have to notice that there's, there is a minus in the middle. So we can rewrite. If you have a minus, the first term will be minus and the second term, all of it will be plus. So let's write the first term minus the second term without any power. And in the second bracket, you will have power. So power of the first bracket, first term square plus first term times the second term plus second term power two. Now let's expand. First bracket remains the same. And in the second bracket, 4m squared is 16m squared plus 28mn plus 49n squared. That's all. Moving on to question 11. Again, factorize. This is the, can you compare this identity with one of the identities that you have learned? Excellent. This is related to x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3xyz. And the expansion was the first three terms without any power. And in the second bracket, with power of all the three terms and minus of each one of them without a two. There is no two here. Okay. But you know that 27 is not having a power there. So we can rewrite the given polynomial as 3x power 3, second term is without a number, minus 3 times 3, the first term, second term, and third term. So this is in the form of the identity. So we can rewrite it. In the first bracket, we have first term, second term, and the third term. And in the second bracket, square of each of these terms. So 3x power 2 plus the square of the second term plus square of the second term minus first term times the second term minus second term times the third term minus first term times the last term. Now let's rewrite this bracket by simplification, which is 3x squared is 9x squared plus y squared 
plus z square minus 3xy minus yz minus 3xz. That's the expansion or that's sorry, that's, ex, that's a factorization of the given polynomial. Now let's see what's question 12. It's also in the same form, but we have to verify. To verify, we always start from the bracket. So let's expand the right side or RHS is equal to half times. The first bracket, we have nothing to do there directly. But in the second bracket, x minus y whole square is x square minus 2xy plus y square plus. Now the second bracket is y square minus 2yz plus z square. And the third expansion is z square minus 2zx plus x square. Now let's group them. In the first bracket, again, we have nothing to simplify there. In the second bracket, 1x square and 1x square is 2x square. 1y square and 1y square is 2y square. 1z square and 1z square is 2z square minus 2xy minus 2yz minus 2zx. Now look at this second bracket. All the terms has a 2 with it. So we can take very good, 2 outside. So first bracket is there, 2 is outside. In the bracket, x square plus y square plus z square minus xy minus yz minus zx. Now this 2 is in the numerator and this 2 is in the numerator. Uh, in the denominator, they get cancelled. So look at this expansion. This is the expansion of our identity, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz. And look at the right side here, left side here. It is the same as LHS. This is how you can verify the result. Now let's see what is the question number, what is question number 13. If the first bracket is zero, show that the whole identity turns to be this one. For that, let us rewrite the identity. Our identity is x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz is equal to, first bracket we have all the three terms without any power, and in the second bracket we have the three terms with power and multiply each term, xy, yz, and xz. Now, they gave you this is equal to zero. So, so we have zero multiplied by the bracket. You know that zero multiplied by any number is, so I'm just taking RHS. RHS is equal to zero multiplied by all these terms, x square plus y square plus z square minus xy minus yz minus xz. And you know zero multiplied by any number is zero. So right side becomes zero. So what will be our left side? x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3xy is equal to zero. Now we can take this term to the right side. So we can rewrite x cube plus y cube plus z cube is equal to 3x y z. This is what you have to prove and we proved it. Good job. Now question 14. Without actually calculating we have to find the answer of this one. We studied in question 13 that if x plus y plus z, if you add all the three numbers and if you get the zero, then the answer is three multiplied by, or we get the answer, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is equal to three x y z. If x plus y plus z is equal to zero. Let's add the first three terms, negative 12, plus seven plus five is equal to zero. So we can say that 
negative 12 power 3 plus 7 cube plus 5 cube is equal to 3 multiplied by the first term. Remember, if you have minus, take it with you. Times the second term, times the third term. And when you multiply these numbers, we will get 3 times 5 is 15. 15 times 7 is 105. Multiply negative 12, which is equal to negative one, two, six, zero. That's the answer. Let's see what's the part two. Again, we have three terms. Let us see what's the answer when you add them. 28 plus or negative 15 minus 13. 20 plus 28 and minus 28 will be zero. Yes. So we can write 28 power three plus negative 15 power three plus negative 13 power three is equal to three multiplied by the first number times the second number times the third number, which is equal to just multiply all the numbers and the sign will be positive because we have two negative signs. So when you multiply all these numbers, we get the answer. Sixteen thousand three hundred eighty. Just a matter of calculation, you can multiply them. Okay, now moving on to question 15. They gave you a rectangle, the area of a rectangle, and you know the area of a rectangle is length multiplied by the width, or length, length multiplied by the breadth. Now the area is 25a squared minus 20, 35a plus 12. So if we can rewrite this in the form of two brackets, first bracket will be the length and the second bracket will be the width or the vice versa. So we need to take them into two brackets or two factors. So let's factorize this big term. Now, as you studied in chapter, in lesson five, chapter two, you can, you remember if the coefficient is not one, we have to multiply this here. So. 12 multiplied by 12. Which two numbers on multiplication will give you 12 times 25? And the same numbers on addition should give you 35. So let us see those numbers. Two numbers on multiplication should give 12 times 25 is 300, positive 300. And the same numbers on addition, we need to get negative 35. We, can, we get 35 from 20 and 15. Yes, so let's see what is 20 times 15. Yes, 20 and 15 is 300, and 20 plus 15 is 35. But we need to get a negative sign. So if both the signs are negative, it will be negative 35. And if both the signs are negative under multiplication, it will be plus because negative times negative will be positive sign. So the numbers are negative 20 and negative 15. So we can split the middle term because we have a coefficient other than one. So first we write the first term 25a squared minus 35 can be written as 20a minus 15a plus 12. Let's group them into two. In the first two terms, 5a is common. When you take 5a, you still have a 5a left. 5 times 5 is 25, a times a is a squared minus four only minus in 15 and 12 three is common so again we have 5a minus four see these two brackets are the same so we take the common bracket outside 5a minus four is out and we collect all the numbers 5a minus three is out so these two are the factors so one of them will be the length and the other will be the width Usually the larger one will be the length. So we can say this is the length and this is the width or the breadth, it's the same. So we can say the length is 5a minus three and the width is 5a minus four units. Wonderful, now let's move to the second part of the same question. Again, we have a term with a coefficient other than one. So we take this number there. So we have times 35, 12 times 35, 
420. So negative 420 should be the number on multiplication. And on addition, we need to get negative, positive 30. Which two numbers will give you 420 on multiplication and positive 30 on addition? We have to keep trying the factors of 120. If you remember how we try the factors of 120 in the previous lesson. So we have to keep trying. And you can see that 28 and 15. Let's see what is 28 and 15. 28 times 15 is 420. And 28 minus 15 is 13. Yes, so if you take one minus here, this will be minus, and this will be positive 13 because we put the sign of larger number. So the numbers are positive 28 and negative 15. So let's expand the middle term or split the middle term. So it will be 35y squared plus 28y minus 15y minus 12. Now let's group them. In the first group, 7y seven is, seven is common. So we have 5y plus 4. In the second group, 3 is common. So 5y plus 4 is again common. We took plus because we have a minus. Minus times plus is minus. Now in the, in the two terms, we have 5y plus 4 is common. We take it outside. And in the second, second bracket, we have 7y minus 3. So one of them will be the length and the other one will be the width. So probably we can take the plus sign. One of them will be, or the length will be 5y plus 4, or even it can be 7y minus 3. And the width will be 7y minus 3. Let's move on to the last question of this lesson. Again, to find the volume of a cuboid. But here we have three terms. You can see that between 12, 8, and 20, 4 is common. Also, k is common in every term. So let's take 4k outside. So when you take 4k outside, we have 3y squared plus 2y minus 5 because 4k is out. Now in the bracket, you can again split the terms to make it into two factors. But you know that the coefficient is not one, so we multiply here. So which two numbers on multiplication will give you negative 15? And the same numbers on addition, we get positive 2. 5 and 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 minus 3 is 2 but the three should be negative. So the numbers are five and negative three. So let's split the middle term. Before that, let's write 4k. Then 3y squared, splitting the middle term, it will be 5y minus 3y minus five. Okay, now let's group them. First two and the last two. In the first two groups, we can see that y is common. So 3y plus 5 is there. And in the last group, there is nothing common, but I can take negative 1 outside. Negative is common. So 3y plus 5 is in the second bracket. We can see these two are same. So let's rewrite. 3y plus 5 is common. I took it outside. And we are left with y minus 1 in the next bracket. So one of them can be the length and the other can be the width and the height. Even it can be the other way. So let's write the length is 4k. Width is 3y plus 5. And the height is y minus 1. It can be switched in between them. Have you noticed that I didn't take 4 is the length and k is the width? Because... Usually in the polynomials, the letter A and K, if it come in between X, Y, Z, we take K or A as a constant. So we consider 4K as a constant. That's why this whole thing is 
representing one of the sides of the cuboid and the other two brackets are representing the other two sides. Hope everything is clear, keep practicing. Let's move on to the homework part. So we can say something, let's consider this whole as a constant plus another constant. So this is compared to a cube plus b cube. If you remember, it was the first bracket with plus and the second bracket with a minus in the middle without two with it. So we can consider three and plus four as a, this whole thing is a, and this whole thing is b. And then expand, you will get the homework. That's all for the, the lesson and that's all for the whole chapter. Hope the lessons are clear to you. Have a wonderful day. Keep practicing. Best wishes.